Hello, dear YouTube. Welcome back, or potentially just welcome. My name is Michelle, and I'm a proud multi-crafter who loves to make all kinds of things and I encourage you to do the same. On this channel, we cover a variety of crafts with a focus on cross-stitch, knitting, and crochet, but today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. If you watched my last video, you might know that I took part in a gift exchange for the holidays this year, organised by the Craft Exchange subreddit. And you'll also know that I tried my hand at a bit of air dry clay for the first time. Today I wanted to show you this project from a perspective of my expectations versus actual reality. What I didn't mention in my last video is that my gifter for this exchange was also my giftee. She sent me this absolutely gorgeous hand dyed yarn, so let's see if I was worthy of such a gift. My giftee likes nature and walks in the woods with her lovely doggo. Art, particularly art of nature. Cottagecore slash rustic decor. Zelda, specifically Breath of the Wild. Vanilla and cinnamon scents. Same. Smell twins. Baking. And movies by this studio that I will not say out loud because it's a whole gif versus gif situation and I do not want to get caught in the crossfire of the pronunciation wars. She specifically requested no crochet or plush toys because she makes those herself. I know she also does embroidery, so would probably prefer not to receive something along those lines. And she also included that her boyfriend is a huge Star Wars fan. I didn't even think to mention Dave's once in my questionnaire that I filled in. Oops. But you didn't click on this video to hear about what a trash girlfriend I am. You clicked on this video to see me fail at some crafts. I had the sudden inspiration to dig out this stamped clay bowls tutorial by Gathering Beauty that I've had bookmarked for ages. Instead of following the tutorial exactly though, I wanted to put my own spin on it. The plan was to draw a stamp design based on my giftee's interests and use that to 3D print a custom stamp. I'd then seal the bowls with resin to make them as waterproof as it's possible to get. So I got to work, and through the power of editing, I'll show you exactly how I imagined this project was going to go. It was, but it was also kind of a complete fabrication. That's movie magic for you. But for reals, it was a little bit more stressful than that. Stick around for the reality of the situation. I settled down in my cozy crafting corner, ready for a bit of graceful, easy arting. All right, first thing, about 10 seconds into this grand ambitious plan, my Apple Pencil ran out of battery. So that wasn't a great start. I'm no artist, so every single line I drew took at least three to five attempts, probably. It took me all night. And a large part of that was just endlessly faffing about with the composition and getting absolutely nowhere. I mean, what is this? You'll notice there was no footage earlier of the stamp actually 3D printing, and you know why? It got super dark in there, and I couldn't figure out how to turn the light on. You heard me. And then, because I couldn't figure out how to turn the light on, I managed to spill resin everywhere from the vat. And the house absolutely stank of resin for, like, the next week. It was gross. I'm not really sure what that little divot is in there. It doesn't seem to have printed out correctly. Back of the stamp, an absolute clip. But, you know, we don't need to talk about that. I decided to cheap out and not buy a special rolling pin and instead use this to roll the clay. Unfortunately, as you can see, we use this to mix silicon, so I needed to pick all of these bits off first. Aesthetic. Attempt one, 
literally cannot even open the clay. Yeah, that's definitely not right. Attempt two. Yeah, I may have got it stuck a little bit. I'm such a mess already. Unfortunately, so is the clay. This ball that I had intended to be the smallest ball in the set is probably going to have to be the biggest because I've used nearly half of a thing of clay and I still don't think it's quite enough for this one ball. Attempt three. Here you see me attempting to place the stamp back in the exact place that it previously was because I've obviously not pressed down hard enough. It didn't work. Attempt four. Nope. Attempt five. You know what? This is fine. Yep. Stuck again. What about it? The tutorial says you can cut round the ball and then just ease the clay into it. But that did not work. I don't know why I still thought this was maybe recoverable. In the end, gave up, used a smaller ball to cut around to fit into the larger ball. Nailed it. One down. Two more to go. My rolling pin is a mess, I'm a mess, everything is a mess. Come on. No. I give up. I'll come back later. I need a break. Remember, if you are enjoying this video, a thumbs up helps me out more than you probably think it would. And also, if you're not subscribed yet, well, you know. Where were we? My system was working fine up until this last ball, and now that does not fit. Why? The other balls fit. Why do you not fit? I kind of managed to ease it in in the end, but it's not pretty. This one needed a lot of re-wetting and smoothing out over the next couple of days, which I did not get on film, but it was a whole thing. Alright, I have got some semblance of three balls. I'm not going to say I'm super confident. The edges are very ragged, but you know what? I don't need to worry about it for the next couple of days until they're dry. Deballing time did not go as smoothly as I expected. <sighs> Come on. I ended up using like a little sewing pen to go around the edges. Probably not a recommended method, but it sort of worked. Nope, nothing doing there. Still stuck. Oh. Got it. That is a misshapen ball. I tried to peel that side away and the whole thing just moved. Yeah. So I'm just going with it. It's really stuck in the Ta da! Oh. Come on, come on. Oh. There we go. Oh, you are floppy. You are a floppy boy. Sanding took forever. Resin time! Okay, this shot is for posterity because I'm not entirely convinced this is going to work. The idea is to paint it with blue resin which will settle into all of the divots and make the design stand out. Which honestly seemed to be working really great for the first few seconds. This is not the same as this. The colour started to change. I had a bit of a panic, I won't lie, but I decided to keep going, paint everything and just see how they ended up. I figured I could always make more balls and try a different technique, but there was no point stopping when I'd already done one. I was definitely not confident at this point. The colour is just strange, it's sort of got a blue tint to it, especially where the resin is pooled, but yeah, it looks weird, especially on this table and in the indoor lights. Anyway, no point worrying, we'll just see how they turn out. Ta-da! All of that drama, and actually they look really cool. They've darkened up a little bit more, the different depths in the stamp pattern have meant that the resin settled in some places more than other and it has a great variation to it, and actually they look weird on the white table, I admit, but when you put them in a real life situation, they actually look pretty good. When it came to packing, the only box we could find that was big enough was way too big. I ended up having to recycle a ton of Christmas packaging, create cardboard struts at either side and fill all of the gaps with old packing peanuts and bubble wrap. 
I hope my gifty collects bubble wrap because otherwise this is a lot more waste than I'm comfortable with. I thought a nice final touch might be to also stamp the card that I'm writing to go in with it. Luckily I anticipated this and brought a spare, making sure to push down on it real, real hard for this second attempt. Oh for god's sake. You know what? I'm just gonna paint it on. And just like that, we are all caught up. Oh, except I also managed to misspell fragile on the side of the box somehow. Just for a bit of extra salt in the wound there. Thankfully, given how stressful this whole thing was, and also the massive regret that came from deciding to ship something so breakable, this part was real. I cannot describe to you my relief upon reading this message. Still, for all of the stress, I really do love making gifts. And this was a special opportunity, because not only is everybody involved in this exchange a crafter themselves, which means they can really appreciate the time that goes into things, but also my particular gifties' interests really lent themselves to trying my hand at a bit of art, and I just loved that it made something so completely unique in the end. I only wish I'd taken better photos, but, you know, there was a lot going on, okay? <laughs> I mentioned this last week, but once again, since she was such a good sport about this whole thing, my giftie does run her own Etsy shop, where she sells awesome crochet creations. You should definitely check her out, the shop name is Things to Yarn For, and I will link both the shop and her Instagram profile in the description below. Right, I'll be back soon with some more crafty nonsense, so in the meantime, have a brilliant rest of your day, and keep making cool stuff. Bye!